Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to grow kale. It's very straightforward, hardy in cold weather, and with a long harvesting period it's perfect to keep you busy over the autumn and winter months. It'll grow well in either a pot or directly in the ground. The diary starts by sowing our kale seeds, and like most of the plants I grow, I'm going to use a cell tray. I find it easier to keep track of my plants and it makes transplanting easier. If you are sowing directly, you can skip this step and sow straight onto the soil surface, and then cover with a little soil. Make sure to water this well. Fill the tray with either a sewing mix or an all-purpose compost. If you can mix your own sewing mix, even better. To ensure there are no air holes, which will impact the growth of your seedlings, gently press your fingers into each cell, and then top up with a little extra soil. This now needs to be fully saturated, so the seeds have the best chance of germinating. You can do this in one of two ways. You can place the tray in a tub and add some water, which can then be left for 15 minutes to soak, or simply water the tray a couple of times. I'm growing dwarf green curled variety this year, and it should be nice and compact, which is great for if you're trying to grow food in a smaller space. So two to three seeds per cell. This is so that we have at least one healthy seedling per cell, and we'll thin them down to the strongest one later. Keep any leftover seeds as these will still be good for the next year or two. Pop in your labels, and then cover the seeds with a little more compost. Lastly, water this again to ensure good seed to soil contact. Place this tray in a warm spot. I would recommend a grow tent like this one, though a warm windowsill will work just as well. So the sowing happened in week one and by week two we can see the seeds have already germinated. Make sure the compost does not dry out as the seedlings are vulnerable at this stage. The seedlings are growing on nicely. If you see them starting to lean to one side, rotate the tray every few days so they grow straight. By week four the seedlings are starting to compete for space within their cell. It's time to thin them down to the strongest seedling. Grab yourself a sharp pair of scissors. I use these little thread cutters and you can pick some up online for only a couple of pounds. Choose the strongest seedling from each cell. The strongest seedling is not necessarily the tallest. Look out for the number of leaves, the more the better, the thickness of the stem, the thicker the better, and how upright it's growing. With the others, cut them at the base of their stem, close to the soil. Don't pull them out or you'll risk damaging the roots of the chosen one. What you'll be left with is one healthy seedling per cell. By week five, the seedlings are ready to go into the ground. They'll quickly become cramped within their cell. Pick a suitable area, which will allow your plants to grow to their maximum size, and give it a good water. This will make transplanting easier. Then you'll need a dibber, or you can use a tool handle, and a pencil. Make a hole in the soil which is the same width and depth as the cell. We want to disturb the roots as little as possible, so we're looking to simply drop the seedlings straight into the hole. Using a pencil, poke the ceiling out of its cell using the hole in the bottom of the tray. And then place it into its hole.
Gently press the seedling down into the hole and then finish by giving the seedling a good water. This will wash the soil into the hole, removing any air and surrounding the roots. Make sure to water newly transplanted seedlings once a day for the next week. When checking back the following week, don't be too surprised if the plants seem like they're not growing. After transplanting, all the energy is going into growing new roots. And we can see at the start of week 7, the kale is settling in well and growing a fresh batch of new leaves. There's not much that you need to do at this stage, other than making sure the soil does not dry out. I would recommend doing a thorough water less often, rather than watering a small amount more often. Though during very hot periods you may need to water every day. You can reduce the amount you need to water by applying a mulch to the soil surface, like wood bark or hay. I've used both and have had excellent results. And by week 10 the plants are filling in the empty space which keeps the sun off the soil too. By week 11 the leaves are starting to take on their distinctive curl. This is a good time to start using a liquid feed once a week. Over the next couple of weeks the plants are growing on nicely and producing lots of healthy leaves. Now that the plants are established you need to start looking out for white cabbage butterfly hovering around. They're easy enough to spot and they're looking to lay their eggs on the underside of the kale leaves. Each time you're near your plants, have a good look for any batches of eggs. I've found some of this leaf here, and I'll tear it off so you can see what you're looking for. As you can see, there is a large batch of eggs. You can combat this in a couple of ways, either by removing the whole leaf by cutting it away from the base of the plant, and then disposing of it, or by rubbing the eggs off the leaf like so. Removing leaves will not limit the plant and it will continue to produce new fresh leaves over the next few months. The plants are very well established by this point and all we need to do is keep them watered, check for eggs and remove any dead or damaged leaves. From week 20 onwards the leaves are ready to harvest. To keep the plant as healthy and productive as possible, we'll be harvesting the lowest leaves. These are the oldest and usually the largest. Cut the leaf at the base and only harvest as many as you need. Also try to harvest equally across all of your plants. They'll continue to produce leaves for many weeks. The plant will look a little strange over time, where it will have a tall bare stem with a mop of fresh leaves on the top. This is a good sign and it keeps the leaves away from the soil. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, I welcome feedback in the comments and please add your advice for those who are looking to grow their own food. Do also consider subscribing, it really does help me make the best quality videos I can. I'd like to thank those who follow the channel. I'm very grateful for all your lovely comments and a big welcome goes to Nadeshda, who's joined us since my last upload. Lastly, here are a few other videos that you may find interesting. Thank you and happy growing.